Okay, everybody, so part three of the install video of the DTH 101. I'm happy to say everything is installed and everything is working. So I'm just going to take you through a quick uh, review of my connections and, uh, you know, we'll call it a day. Um, as we mentioned last time, we are using the DTH 101 unit, and I've got it right here, actually, temporarily in this box here where there's a plug right behind it. Um, which is keeping it safe from the weather as was important if you can see that little blue light that's on right there where the Wi-Fi symbol on is that means it's connected to my home Wi-Fi so it's receiving a signal from the inside of the house just fine so we're keeping it here for now again we've got the two connections that are sort of coming out of the bottom of my box this is the spade connector that we had talked about that actually does the control on the heater unit itself uh, and I'll show you where that terminates. And then this other black cable, uh, which is running behind the unit, is the temperature control. And I'll show you where that terminates also. Again, super important to keep it within a box because this DTH-101 is not waterproof. Maybe they'll change that in the future, but that's how it is now. So my connections are coming out here. Um, one thing that I did wind up having to do is I did extend both of these cables. Um, so if you see here, I've got a patch. It's really just speaker wire. So I cut it here, uh, added, I don't know, maybe about another four feet of speaker wire right here. I used a 14 gauge. Really shouldn't matter if you twist it in there properly. And <clears throat> then I terminated it over here and then use the original cable to actually go back into the box. So that extension happened, it's a little messy. I might put this in a conduit longer term uh, to protect it from the rain. But again, this is a rough install just to show you that everything is working. The speaker wire um, spade connector uh, is terminating in the box over here by the side of the heater as uh, expected. I can pop it in through this hole, but again, rough, rough install. It's working just fine, just kind of tucked underneath there. The two spades are connected, the red to pool, the black to calm, everything's working perfectly. Uh, this was a nice surprise. We talked about two places that we could connect the uh, temperature reader, the black cable that's also coming off the DTH um, unit. And I actually went with the drain right on the side of the Hayward unit. Um, and it's a uh, plug and play. You pull out the drain cap, you screw the sucker in, not having any leaks or anything. So everything is, is, is working just fine with that connection. Um, and again, I did extend the black cable, so you will see, uh, actually this is a, a plug and play extension, so I didn't have to do any cutting or anything. So one cable into the longer extension. Uh, this is the original side over here that's going. And again, this goes back to the DTH 101. So beautiful piece and all the links to all the parts are in the description of this video. So have no fear, go take a look at it there. And also all the videos, uh, one, two, and three are actually uh, there also. Um, so in terms of connections, that was it. Um, the one final thing that I did have to do <coughs> is I did have to put the uh, Hayward heater in uh, remote control mode. Um, and what I had to do to do that was I think I pressed, I set the selector to the pool. Uh, that's hot tub, the bottom one is the pool. And then I pressed this, these three lines and the uh, uh, negative number for a couple seconds. And then it, it, it listed something that said BO or B0. Once it says B0, again, just for the Hayward, <laughs> Jandy and Pinter are likely a little bit different, maybe even simpler. Um, once it says BO, you are uh, in remote control mode. So you are set to go. But that's one final thing that you do need to do uh, to make sure that the DTH can control this through those spade connectors. Um, and I, th oh, finally, let me show you the app. Uh, hopefully you can see this. this is my iphone i've got all my home automation stuff sort of connected together if you can see that right there that's the ewe link app in particular so i click that open that sucker up and it comes up to a menu that talks to me about my pool heater control i press that <coughs> and this is telling me that the current temperature of the water is 64 degrees i can turn it on turn the heater on right now from here uh, obviously the pump is not working a little bit early in the morning the pump needs to be on obviously <coughs> um, but all i would do is press the power button right there and the heater would turn on and there's other features down here i could do some programming some scheduling uh say you know shut it off at 85 and when it gets below 82 turn it back on all sorts of great automation but if you really just want to turn it on and turn it off uh, you've got this power button right here that you can do so and you always have the active temperature that's coming off of <coughs> that little black temperature controller here that's into the 
uh, side of the heater. That's touching, actually touching the water and giving you the temperature. Um, I think that's it, guys. Again, all the links to the videos, the overview, the installation, the post install are in the description. All the parts are in the description. Um, so I hope you guys um, have similar luck to me. Again, I might clean up this install a little bit later, but everything's working for now. So I'm gonna leave it be and uh, hope you guys are enjoying your pull. I have no affiliation with the company. Just wanna help some people out. So uh, if you like the video, give me a like or subscribe and wishing you guys all the best. Happy uh, pool heating.